Okay, FIL Studio Show. Uh, we're here up at the top getting ready for the relay race. So I'm going to walk around really quick, but I want to point out these gates right here, okay? I'm going to crown because I'm being sneaky. And this is one part of the relay that makes it different. So we'll see the first sled will go off normal. They do a normal start. And then these bad boys are going to close. And then it becomes a reaction start for the next three sleds. So they will hear there's little lights right there. They'll see the yellow light. And I think the yellow light gets triggered somewhere halfway down the track. I don't know the exact curve. Uh, my apologies for that. But once it hits that certain timing eye, the yellow light will go. And then they have to just wait uh it's probably about a 15 second span where they're just waiting and once they get the green light these flip open and they pull as hard as they can so uh it's an exciting part of the sport that the change time you'll see it on the screen for the world feed uh, it'll tell you how fast it took for them to pull off uh, and then that's how it goes then the next sled and the next sled and so this is really cool year because it's the first year for the team relay where they have women's doubles uh on the track so it's going to be cool the men obviously had to come down from the top so it'll be a little different from the bottom, but uh, I'm going to hand this over to our commentators uh, in the booth. They're the ones that are going to chat about this a little more. Tim, what do you got for us? What I have for you were some closed microphones, but now they're open. And also who I have for you is Team USA's Zach DiGregorio. So Zach, you've been part of two podium finishes so far this season in the relay. What is it, what is it about the relay that makes this the most fun discipline in luge? Yeah, it's just a really exciting discipline. Having four sleds come down, the time never stopping until you hit the pad at the very end. Anything can happen. Putting down three sleds in years past have been hard, and then now adding another, it's going to be a crazy one. And you certainly know as well as anyone that anything can happen because I don't want to suggest that the United States didn't earn a podium last weekend. However, you sat there in that leader zone and you saw two pretty big nations miss the pad. So anything can happen. What about this outrun? What do you know about it? Yeah, I mean, this is first off a short track. It's going to be only 40 seconds from when you can sit down on the ice till when you're supposed to be pulling off. So for doubles, it's always a challenge no matter what track. Um, but the shorter tracks is even harder. You have to clip yourself in, put down your face shield, be fully ready, have the bottom man grab the handles, and yeah, be ready to go in that 40 seconds. And then the outrun is not easy either. It's a no. steep outrun, it's very short, and you have to hit that pad. And it's arguable that the biggest challenge today could be for the men's singles. Because not to throw sand in your face, but Zach, you know better than anyone this weekend that that start curve off of the lower start is quite a challenge. It's slow speeds. Yeah, for sure. It's not an easy start curve. And the start ramp's steep. And yeah, the men haven't been able to practice. I mean, Austria is probably the only team that's had any men go from women's start this whole year. So, so we'll see. So let's talk about Austria. Germany has won each of the first two relay events this year. Germany has actually won 47 World Cups all told. Austria only five. You gotta believe they're the favorites though, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, like we said though, it's four runs that they need to get down. We saw in the women's doubles race, Selena was in first going into the second run and then a mistake cost it all. So anything can happen today. And I do think Austria is the favorite, but I think they need to be all putting down clean runs. Until then, Germany leads the World Cup standings, Austria second, the USA third, and certainly Latvia and Italy will have something to say about it as well here in Innsbruck. So that's the situation. Zach and I will be back here in just a couple of minutes for the call of this weekend's final race, the Team Relay. Back to you, Kate. Thank you so much, Zach and Tim. Uh, this is going to be a good race uh, for Zach. It's going to be... Oops. Wer wird diese Teams dafür bewerten heute für sich entscheiden? Schaffen Sie die Österreicher oder schlagen da jetzt die Deutschen noch einmal für die All right, okay, so we're up here at the start. I'm trying to turn on my mic. We're having some technical difficulties right now. We'll see if it connects. 
uh, into the Bluetooth, but this is us up at the start. So sleds are getting ready. Uh, it's going to be an interesting start because if you look over here, it's actually really a steep ramp. Um, it, you can't really tell from the top, uh, but when, when you come from the side over here, it, it really is a steep ramp. So these athletes, these athletes really have to reach their bottles, come down here, and kind of just go, uh, kind of reach as far as they can into it. So we've got uh, the sleds are coming up right here. Team Germany. This is the team that we are looking to beat. I mean, not me specifically, uh, but uh, the Team Germany. We're gonna have to see how well they do. They've won every, they've won every relay race so far this year. So I, I will see if Team Austria has something to say about it. Uh, they, they've done so well. Jonas Mueller won earlier today. Egla won yesterday. Stroy Kindles. So they've kind of got this all-star, uh, this all-star team that they're, they, they've, they've thrown together. So uh, we just have to see. Last week in Winterberg, there was a lot of issues with teammates hitting the paddle. Uh, big issues for Romania, I believe, Latvia, it, Italy. So we'll see if they wrap this all together. So it's going to be interesting. So this is our last race of the weekend. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll catch you after the race with all of our athlete interviews. The fourth stop on the Eberspecha FAL Luge World Cup season concludes with this race, the team relay presented by BMW. Hi again, everyone. I'm Tim Singer. Absolutely spectacular all weekend here in the Tyrolean Alps. They've left all of the clouds aside somewhere, probably still hovering over the track in Winterberg, but we've had splashes of sunshine from top to bottom of this track. Really great conditions to tell us a little bit more about this track and give us a ride down from the lower start in anticipation of the team relay. I'm pleased to announce 2022 Olympian from Team USA and winners of the opening race this season, Zach D. Gregorio. Zach, welcome. Kreisel, and this is a tough part of the track from this lower start. With not as much speed, you don't have as much pressure into eight, nine here. You see exit nine has been tricky for the men, for the women, and for the doubles. So hopefully we can see everyone go straight through there. And then this is the big curve 10 that sends us into the labyrinth. That's three quick turns, 11, 12, and 13 all that you need to be perfect. We've seen sleds flip here. We've seen them skid into 14 and that can make or break your race. And then coming out of 14 here, you have to sit up and get ready for the pad because it'll be before this finish curve here. Hitting the pad is so key. Italy and Latvia know that better than anyone having missed the pad. Really, this is five nations probably vying for the podiums, all things being equal, which of course they're not in the team relay. So it's nine total in today's competition. And that is, I think we've had nine in each of the races so far this year. They haven't been exactly the same nine. Maybe they have been. But uh, Romania will be first to go. That's Valley Kratu getting ready. And the doubles teams, of course. But leading things off will be Karina Buzatoy. And while we get ready, really quickly, Zach, you've done this at the Olympics. You've done this in the last two weeks. The pad has to be hit. The clock continues to stop, but there's a lot at work here. There's reaction time, there's change time. Yeah, exactly, like you said, you need to hit that pad at the bottom. The women doesn't have a re reaction time, but every other sled in the field will. So once it, the timing starts, it doesn't stop till that women's doubles hits the pad. Romania will be the first to go. They're, they're gonna run at five minute intervals, meaning you're probably gonna see about a three minute race, but then there's two minutes between each of the teams. It gives us a chance to show you some replays to introduce you to the athletes. And as we said, Buzatoy leading things off for Romania. She's on course. The clock will show up in a second, and then it continues running for all four sleds. Zach, as I said in the pregame show, you know how tough that start is, and she just showed it. For sure, it's so difficult there, and adding Team Relay on top of that, there's that little bit of pressure, so 
we saw she just pulled too far to the right, tried to get the start curve perfect, but with that, ended up doing too much. Corina was uh, in 27th place yesterday morning in the women's singles competition. So far this year, Rom Romania had a ninth place finish and a disqualification. So here she comes down at the bottom. This is higher up than the standard finish time. Clean hit. Yep, clean hit. And it looked like a pretty clean run after that start. A little disaster there. Hondarek and Mocha finished 17th in yesterday's race. Uh, this uh, Lisa was telling me earlier this morning, maybe the biggest factor down below might be the sun on that paddle. Is it right in your eyes? Yeah, coming through 14 and out of 14, you can't really see too much. So I didn't really even think of that. I've never raced a relay here in Eagles, but it definitely makes sense. It's not going to be easy to see. The white on white blends in. But these doubles coming down, looking like they're having a pretty clean run and should be happy with it so far. One thing we can almost guarantee is that we'll be seeing a track record here in a moment because this is the first year there has ever been four sleds in the team relay in Innsbruck. This is the first season of the four disciplines. Valentin, usually one of the more reliable athletes in the sport, if not the fastest, but he had some trouble last week in the relay. Yeah, was he, did he miss the pad? Yeah. Missed the pad coming off the outrun in Winterburg. Looks like he has made the top section look pretty easy so far. A little trouble at the start, but nothing major. Valentin Kretu, the veteran now in the lower labyrinth section. And it's looked pretty clean down below for all three Romanian sleds so far. Sun in their eyes. You need that dark visor here. Hits the pad, and now the team of Raluca Stramatoraru, Mihailu Manaleshu, two former singles competitors, now in their second year together as a women's doubles team. And you saw Valentin set up pretty early for that pad. Not sure if that was not knowing exactly where it was going to be or the sun in the eyes, but he definitely played it safe on that one. You know, in baseball, don't the outfielders say have those, they flip down the sunglasses when the ball is hit to them. That's what you need to have. It's looking like another fairly clean run so far. So other than that, First, yeah, the first start, other than that, it's been pretty clean for Romania here. Raluca's had a few runs down this track over the years. Successful with the pad, so that's good news. Romania can do no worse than ninth place after the DSQ. And this is a finish time of 256.038. I didn't see track record flash, so maybe they did actually set a formal track record during Austria's national title, you know, race or something. Yeah, I'm must have sure. been, or maybe they just didn't didn't put it in quite yet. First four sled World Cup race ever held here. And there you just see the, the problems at the start. This is the exit of curve nine. See a little quick slow-mo of each of these sleds. Yeah, that sun is shining right in their eyes right before they have to sit up, so. We will see how everyone fares through it, but it's not going to be an easy one today. Not the best aerodynamic position there, but it's most important that you get through curve nine safely. Yeah, like we said, it's it's been difficult for pretty much every discipline there. We've seen people throw away the races just from a quick tap out of there. The jams are working down at the bottom. Spectators dancing in the finish area. And Romania successfully through with their weekend. Next stop, the World Championships for Team Romania. They will, of course, stage the relay at the Worlds, as they've done at every Olympics since 2014. There will also be relay events in Oberhof and Sigulda. And I think the other Altenburg World Cup will have a relay. So. That's kind of good news that you have relays in six of the World Cups, sprints in only three. Zach, I've taken an informal survey, and mostly it's a vote for nine-nothing relay. I would agree with that. I think relay is just so fun. It's so exciting to watch. No one knows exactly what's going to happen, so I like it a lot more than a sprint weekend. The Chinese team did not take part in the World Cup opener in Whistler in relay, but they did have a very respectable sixth place finish last week in Whistler. Hulan Hu 
starts things off coming off of a 26th place finish yesterday in women's singles. Yeah, and I've seen the Chinese team this whole season where they've looked very solid on the sled. They've come a long way and they're just moving up the ranks now. Also, one thing that's impressed us through this weekend are how aggressive they are at the start. Nothing timid about what they're doing on the, on the uh, start ramp, which is great. Yeah, and I wonder how much of that is from recruiting, because I know they all started a little bit older than the normal luge athlete, so if they picked sure. stronger people and stuff. Also, it's also nice. during his career, Tony Benchoff was a great starter in the sport of luge, so he's probably translating that to his pupils in China. I'm not sure what that spectator's doing, hey. rallying them on. But it's been looking like clean runs from China so far. A little early to 11 there. Chu oh. Bayou and Hu, they have a big skid. They stay on the sled. They have to regroup. They're actually going to slow down. Should have no problem hitting the pad. And here's Ying Li. Ying did not qualify on Friday for the main draw this morning. So this is his lone opportunity. And Zach, that's another great thing about the relay. You can miss out on qualifying for the World Cup race, but still be able to get a World Cup action on Sunday. For sure, it makes that weekend a little more rewarding, especially when you can put down a good run in relay. By contrast, you could be Wolfie Kindle, who seemingly races all day, every day. Yeah, I couldn't imagine doing what he's doing. I don't know how he hasn't fully been like too tired to slide any day, but that really Master wrote the book on that. Yep. And yeah, he showed it's it's not an easy journey to do, but Wolfie's been strong through it all. So far, no issues at all with anyone with that pad, which is great. Now the Chinese women's doubles team, Zhao and Julian Neti, they finished 14th yesterday in the World Cup race, the two-run race. Really, again, they need to find some speed somewhere, Zach, but they have been impressive. Yeah, other than that, the doubles problem down below, it's it's been very clean, and you know their position is getting better week by week, and yeah, we'll see what this women's doubles can do. There hasn't been a senior national race since the 2022 Olympics in Beijing in China, but the World Cup is expected to head back to China next season. 251.321, that's a second place time, not too far in back of the Romanians. I mean, normally 0.28 back is a big margin, but in the relay, not as much. Yeah, for sure. That was four solid runs. You know, both teams had one mistake that cost them a lot of time, but Romania ended up on top. This, uh, this track scores some pretty good points for the classic American rock that they play. They've had good music, yeah, all, all weekend. Cheers up the mood after a bad race. It's perfect. Exit of nine. A little high on the exit of nine there, and you see him get pushed over to the left wall, but he does a great job correcting it. Now the doubles team. This was the trouble Zach was alluding to. A lot of skidding. Yeah, and just when you're sideways with your feet down through that much curve, it's going to slow you down quite a bit. In the uphill finish, too, just really bleeds that time. You know, throughout training and even in yesterday's women's doubles races, we saw a lot of problems right there, right before the finish. And in fact, Ashley, your teammate did that during seated training. Things can happen really quickly at the high speeds. Yeah, at the bottom of the track, it's tight transitions too. So anything off a little bit just keeps compounding through those third three curves. And yeah, you never know if you're gonna flip or just skid or what will happen. Okay, they don't run races on paper, but I'll say it anyway. On paper, you got to expect Latvia to take the lead right now. You also probably need to expect them to hang on to that lead. If they hold off Italy, they could be good making a run right down to the podium. And by on paper, I mean based on their results so far this weekend. Elena Vitola leads things off. She's always fast at the start. You'll see green here in a second. And Vitola finished eighth yesterday. I think she dropped from fifth place to eighth in the second run. Yeah, she put down a really solid first run. I think some people sped up and also some small mistakes in her second run put her down to eighth. 
so far this season. Latvia had a fifth place finish in Whistler, and then they had a crash last week. Who was it that crashed? It was Christers. It was Christers, yeah. yeah, in 14. Amazing. He and Dominic both crashing, two of the more reliable losers. For sure, but you see a huge gap there already, and I think the stumbles will open that up quite a bit, too. Martin Spots, Roberts Pluma, they finished second yesterday behind Stoy and Kindle. They have been regular fixtures on the top three in the World Cup ever since their surprise relay Olympic medal in 2022. Yeah, and these two are super hard workers. Very fast start, very good sliding. So it's good to see them at the top of the, on the podium weekly. Well, you hit on a great point, hard working. You, you probably can't state enough how big an advantage that gives someone. Because yeah, for sure. This is work on the sled. It's work on your conditioning. It's work on knowing the track. A little bit of a rough settle for Christopher Zapriolds, just trying to keep that sled stay safe. Straight down the middle, he finally gets the hands tucked in just above the Chrysler. And not getting the hands in isn't going to be as big as him not skidding through five, though. He did a great job on even with almost brushing that wall on the right side. He made curve five look very easy there. Christers crashed last week in the team relay. Lower Labyrinth was tough for a lot of sleds, usually late each day. This track has held out pretty well all weekend. Yeah, and it's looking like Latvia so far has had three solid runs, so hopefully they can get a fourth here and put down a time that it's gonna be hard to beat. Here, here's one of the surprises of the weekend. Very few people had even heard of Robinica and Bogdanova prior to yesterday, and they put in a fourth place result in their World Cup debut. Yeah, and it was a battle for that too. It, oh, we see a pretty big mistake there out of curve, or out of Kreisel before curve eight. Obviously this won't cost them the lead, but it may cost them their chance to hold off Italy. Yeah, it's gonna be hard with that. I mean, we know how strong the women's doubles team for Italy is and pretty much any mistake. Ooh, another big skid into 14. He'll get through and hit the pad. Oh, she sat up very early as well. Talk a little bit about hitting that pad. You're going fast. You're the top man. You've got to hit the pad. Is this core muscles? Is this agility? What, what, what does it take? What hurts afterwards? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of everything. It's not an easy task. When you're going 70, 80 miles per hour and have to sit up as last minute as possible and hit that pad, it's, it's all of it. So you really need the timing down to know how fast you can get up there and how, how long your arm really is because some people can do it while still laying down. Some people have to sit up for it. And with that, it just makes it very difficult. I do think those mistakes by the women's doubles though might be too much for them to really put in a fight here against Italy and USA as well. The Italians will be next, so that will be the telltale sign. I, I gotta believe whichever of these two nations takes over the lead in a moment here, they should hold on to the lead for two, possibly three nations. At least how it all figures based on performance this year. They seem to be relieved as they'll pack up the gear and head to Altenburg, Germany. Now the Italians, and in all of the years, the seven years now, or rather, sorry about that, the 13 years they've had World Cup team relay, 12 of those 13 years, Germany has won the World Cup overall. The other year, Italy tied with Russia for the World Cup points total. So Italy with the seven is actually the number of career race wins they have. They've fallen a little bit on tough times in the last few years as they look to strengthen their programs and find some consistency, in particular in women's singles and men's doubles. But they always have a lot of athletes, and what's fun about Italy is it's not always the same athletes from week to week. And this is Verena Hoffa leading things off. Top 10 finisher yesterday. Yeah, was she U23 European champ as she well? She was, yeah. And uh, all of the Italian women, Sandra and, and the others, had to take part in the Nations Cup to get into that World Cup race. She's got that good form with the two toes pointed inward. 
Yeah, and you see she's having a solid run so far. I think that top 10 yesterday was a great confidence booster going into relay here. We'll try to keep you updated on the clock as we're not seeing it at the moment on the screen. And this is pretty key because we'd love to be knowing how Italy is faring against Latvia. They hit the pad, Rieder and Kainzwaldner, the veteran double team, former singles competitors. And you see it's very close right now, only five hundredths. This is not a surprise. This could be the closest race of the day, irrespective of position, these two nations. Yeah, I think so too. I think once it comes to women's doubles, Italy, if they can put down a clean run, they'll open it up quite a bit. But for these first three sleds, I think it's gonna be neck and neck. Emmanuel and Simone. Now down in the lower section, just five hundredths of a second. This is tighter racing than you normally see in team relay. So this is great. Dominic Fischnaller waiting at the top. Very quick reaction time, or at least so it looked. Not so much, 2.4 is about average on the change time. But Dominic, let's see what he can pull off after a seventh place finish earlier today. And normally you don't want to see the sled coming down the left side of the start ramp there, but Dominic made it work somehow. And I think he's glad about that, but I think it cost him quite a bit of time on Christers. Dominic may have more runs down this Innsbruck track than anyone not Austrian. And now in the labyrinth. And I think this is gonna turn into quite a good fight. With Dominic being behind by three tenths, I think might open up to three and a half tenths. In their women's doubles, having mistakes, it's, it's gonna come down to this. If Andrea can put down a good run here, I think they'll end up coming back, but Three and not, a half is, I, I, I'd love to know the margin. They finished second yesterday, Andy and Marian, where the Latvian team finished fourth. I think that the, the gap was a little tighter than that. Yeah. I but they're cutting imagine, into it yeah. already. And we saw mistakes out of Kreisel from the Latvians, mistakes out of nine, so. Can I you think, make up two tenths here? I think with the run the Latvians had, they definitely can, but on In a the clean green. run, I don't know if they would have been You're able to. You're good at predicting this <laughs> stuff, Zach. Well done, including that three and a half tenths yeah. at the last pad. Hit that pad, and he does it, and they Solid. really open it up. Yeah. What it, they, they gained, what was that, about a, a second? Yeah, just a full almost second. exactly a second, yeah. Doubles, that's incredible. That's awesome for them. I think that's gonna be a hard time to beat for the U.S. I'm not sure how much Austria's gonna have too much trouble just seeing how fast Jonas was, seeing how fast Madeline was, but. Well, we, we know that the American doubles team ended up in women's doubles on the podium just behind Italy yesterday. Uh, they had to have a couple of teams fall behind for them to get there. But you know better than anyone, Zach, that the USA has quietly snuck onto that podium a couple of times in the last few races. And they've done it with some good performances in this competition. Yeah, for sure. I think the US, I don't know, we're, we're a very close team and with that everyone's always happy for each other and want to win together want to lose together so once it comes to the team relay i think we're very good about you know not putting pressure on each other you don't want to say want to lose together you want to say yeah accept, accept those together, together. Yep. yep italy sure. with a good showing holding off latvia again as we've been talking about the usa they're not up for another three nations we figure they'll be the next threat to italy but let's give due to the next two teams who are going before or going after Latvia and Italy because they've been steadier the first two weeks. So next up is the team from Ukraine. Eighth place in Whistler. Fifth place last week in Winterberg. Leading things off will be Yuliana Tunitska. Tuniska broke onto the World Cup as a 17-year-old about three or four years ago and did it with some impressive results. One top 15, I think. She's really had some trouble this year, not only trying to match those top 15s, but to even get into the field on a Nations Cup. So I'm not sure what's going on there. And so I believe Junior World Champion? That's, that's exactly yep. right. Last year in Blue Dance. Just three somewhat conservative paddles, but that yields a relatively clean start. Expect Ukraine to show up here in the red in a moment and to stay in the red. 
but who knows, Zach? You know, some some four clean runs here could put them in fifth place at the end of the day. Maybe six, 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 maybe fifth, probably six. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest thing for them. It's just putting down those clean runs, seeing where they end up. You know, you never know if there's going to be a battle with them in Poland, but Italy didn't make many mistakes, so I think it'll be hard for them to really keep up with that time. Tanitska clean from top to bottom, and the pad opens the gate for Hoy and Kachmar. 19th place yesterday for the veteran top man with his new younger bottom man. That's the case with your teammates too. The veteran top man with the new younger bottom man showing up in a bit. Yeah, and it's always interesting to see, you know, Stoy had that as well this year with Wolfie. Yeah. And they've won a race. Yep. I, I was about to ask you, how long does it take? How many years does it take to really gel as teammates? Well, for Stoy and Wolfie, a quarter of a year. Yeah, it's been crazy to watch that. Very, very impressive stuff by those two. Andy and Marion as well. Yep. Manzi up next. Andre Manzi, the king of the nation's cup. He's been on the podium almost every week in that race. He's really enjoying one of his better seasons in his long career. 13th place this morning in men's singles. And he is looking very relaxed from this lower start, head all the way back and just letting the sled run. Every year the World Cup Tour makes its way to Innsbruck, usually as the opening race. This is stop number four, out of curve 10 now, Andre Manzi, the third of four sleds for Ukraine. Yeah, and like you said, with us coming here not the first stop, it's, it's definitely interesting. Very cold weather this whole week, which has gave us great track conditions. I mean, we saw how many track records this weekend. The, the women were close as well, so it's been good to see. Now, Elena Stetskiv and Alexandra Mok, two singles athletes doubling, at least for now, singles and doubles. I'm actually expecting that they may leave singles behind. And that's one reason they're bringing some good young women's singles competitors here from Ukraine. Yeah, it's interesting with the women's doubles being so new. A lot of the sliders are doing with, uh, singles and doubles, so with that, they're just figuring out what they really want to pursue. This will be for hopefully third place for Ukraine, and it is 2.838. Italy, of course, hangs on to its spot just ahead of Latvia. They're separated by just over a half a second with Ukraine, Romania, and the People's Republic quite a bit further behind. Yeah, but we saw four good runs by Ukraine, so I think they'll be happy with that one and be excited for world champs in a couple weeks. All of you athletes have really learned how to play the cameras. You know, I know that Team USA, Gordy for years has been doing the media training, but uh, it took a few years for people to fully understand, you gotta work the camera. You for gotta sure. have a little fun down there. Yeah, and it's always a good opportunity to show all the people who support you on your jackets as well, so the more time on camera, the better. Absolutely. No issues with the pad. Of course, I'm going to jinx the next team probably because every time we say that, something goes awry. It has been interesting. I mean, we haven't seen anyone, you know, not ready to pull like we saw in Winterberg or anyone even come close to missing the pad. So hardest pad location in the world? Segulda by far. Just yep. coming out you of come the out of a finished Kreisel, right? Yep. And yeah, I mean, I think it was, it took a while till the Austrians ever even finished a relay there. I don't know if last year they did finally finish a relay, but I know they were saying before, like they never had a podium in team relay in school. That's remarkable. I know they just, they hate that track period. Yeah. First race to the end of the weekend. Last now, year was a rough one there for them. Now Poland, we've talked a lot about the United States inheriting the podium last week due to the mishaps by Latvia and Italy, but Poland right behind them, distant behind them, but come on, Poland in fourth place, that was a lot of fun to see. And Claudia Damaratska leads things off. She did not qualify this weekend for the World Cup race. That's the exception, not the rule for Claudia, who's usually in the mix in the 20th to 30th place area. Yeah, last week was very exciting for them. You know, they're all happy to be in fourth. 
yes, unfortunate events happened to Latvia and Italy, but to see them up there was great. Would you believe me if I said I remember Poland being on the podium once in a relay? Really? What year was that? This I want to say 2020, maybe, okay. in Winterberg, and there's an asterisk. Oh, Several nations process? boycotted yep. the yep. race, but still, it was fun. Yeah, it I was know. fun to see Poland there, a smiling. Podium a podium. Take that step up onto the podium. Pretty cool. For sure. Tim Lewski and Kovalevsky were part of that team Poland that day. They're now on course. 14th place yesterday in the men's doubles. Yeah, and I've noticed they've been a little hot and cold this season. When they're fast, they're very fast, but when they're not finding the lines, it's just not quite there. What they're shooting for here is a number three position. If they're in third place, at the end of the four sleds, they'll have held their spot. Little tap, obviously, there between nine and ten. Yeah, just some problems on that exit of ten. And carrying a quick correction the, there. Yep, yeah, carrying into the labyrinth a little bit, but they make it work, and they'll get this patch. It's fine. They do it, and, and while the doubles team has been hot and cold, Zach, sadly, Matias has been cold and cold. He's really having trouble trying to find that form he had a few years ago. 26th place earlier today. Yeah, it's hard sometimes. Just some weeks don't want to work, some years don't want to work. So just keep your head up and hopefully you can turn that around. Quick correction, he was 24th. Don't want to shorten him at all. And a nice exit of nine. Yeah, this is looking like a solid run so far. And you see he's not losing much time on Dominic so far. Little problems in the 13 there, but nothing major. Hey, not bad if you can keep up with Fischnaller. So it's 1.455, the deficiency. This should be good enough for third place down here at the bottom, providing that this final sled that finished 16th yesterday can keep it clean. Domovich and Pivkowska, Polish women doubles. And so far, it's looking pretty clean here. Exit of nine, not so clean. Oh, no, this uh, this cost them their spot, and they could likely Whoa. fall behind Ukraine now. Yeah, I think they're going to be happy that they kept the steals down on that one because that looked like it could have been a crash pretty easily. I think they'll end up dropping a couple spots here. Fifth place, so behind both Ukraine and Romania, only ahead of China right now. And it all came unglued, unfortunately, from the women's doubles team. And that just shows you how quickly things can turn. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the fourth sled, women's doubles is already a pretty new category. And then adding them into relay, which is another new factor, it's not easy for any of these teams. And you see sometimes the pressure is just a little too much. The long faces as they walk back. Uh, classy enough to give a wave. And you know that's tough to do after yeah. you've had a disappointing one. But it was good to see, I mean, 1.4 seconds behind Italy after three slides. When Italy had pretty solid runs, it's, it's no joke there. That's what you call wavering down the straightaway. Yeah, a whole lot of saves on that one, but ended up getting into 10 okay. Here was the biggest problem of the four sleds. Yeah, just too high at the end of nine there, pushes them over to that left wall, and then didn't get it back till pretty much the end of the track. Italy and Latvia both in search of their first podiums of the season. Italy can get there, pending what happens next with Team USA. It's a new doubles team to the relay, Dana Kellogg and Frank Ike. Did Dana ever do it with Duncan? Was he ever in a World Cup relay? Or was it always you and Sean? It's been me and Sean since the Olympics, yeah. So this will be his first relay. That'll be fun to see. Ashley Farquharson has gone from flashes of brilliance to among the most consistent losers in the world right now. Ashley finished fourth yesterday at a podium earlier this season. She, I believe, has been top six in every race this season. 
Yeah, she's had a really solid season so far. Her second run yesterday, too, super fast. So hopefully she can put down another good one for Team Relay here. Ashley was part of the bronze medal winning relay team last week. Her teammate Emily Sweeney won bronze at the first relay. So the USA yesterday put three sleds in women's luge in the top seven. And so far she's having a solid run here, getting into the labyrinth, looking calm and relaxed. Got to believe that Ashley needs to build a lead on Verena Hofer. That, that's the first chore, and she does it by five hundredths of a second. Yep. Now, now let's see how Dana and Frank in their first ever World Cup relay can perform. I'm excited for this. Dana's been sliding really good all week, so excited to see him in his first relay here. They finished eighth yesterday. That was a day after winning the Nations Cup qualifying race. And I believe eighth is Dana's best finish in a World Cup as well, so he was stoked about that. They've given up a lot now to Reeder and Kainz Waldner of Italy, point two two. Johnny Gustafson will need the fast start. He'll need the clean lines if he hopes to cut into the Italian lead. The pad is hit, not bad at the bottom part for the USA doubles team. They didn't lose much more. And how was that change time? It looked good. I mean, Johnny has a pretty fast reaction. It's always hard to tell because in training he's against Tucker, who has the fastest reaction. But Johnny's been also sliding solid, built a lot of confidence this season, looks very relaxed in the sled. Gustafson finished ninth earlier today. That was two positions behind Fischnaller of Italy. Next up, women's doubles. The Americans finished one spot behind Italy. And it's going to be interesting to see. Johnny's only a tenth and a half behind. He's cutting into the lead. This is great for the USA, at least. But Siobhan and Sofia will need to be perfect. Two tenths of a second, a lot to make up against Andy Fetter and Marion Oberhofer of Italy. Yeah, a lot of other doubles teams to go up against. Maybe they can make up that two tenths, but with them on their home track, they're very solid. They had a good run, so this is going to be a very tough one for Siobhan. Siobhan and Sophia, Forkman and Kirkby, their podium yesterday was their second of the season. Nice exit of nine. They're looking solid so far. Well, they're Stay staying the even, staying about even with the Italians. So they're not going to catch Italy. USA will need some help. But for the most part, it was pretty steady. That may have been the fastest doubles run for the women's doubles yeah, so far in the like race. That. Yeah, I think they got them by a hundredth or so. And yeah, awesome run by Siobhan. Really had a clean run. Um, so she'll be proud of that. Dana and Frank, first relay, that was awesome. So. Well, the United States has gotten some help after making its way onto the top three in the relay. So it's, I think it's going to take monumental help with Austria and Germany still to come. Yeah, I'm not quite sure on what would not be needed from Austria or Germany. Both countries have looked so solid this year and this week. So it's almost a certainty, however, for the USA that they will head to the World Championships still in third place in the World Cup standings in Team Relay. Johnny with some pretty good form, very comfortable here in Eagles. Yeah, I think he really likes this track. Last year with a six, today with a nine. He's looked very solid here in the past couple years. And Lisa Schulte today working in your position, she, she knew Johnny was gonna have a good day. She just, sort of said, I've been watching him and he looks really good here. Yeah, and Johnny does so good when he's confident. It's a big part of his sliding and you can really tell when he's on. All right, what's your take on the doubles team? One person carrying the sled versus two. Sean always carries the sled, um, for sure. Okay. I mean, I'm doing steel work and stuff like that, but he'll always, he'll always be in charge of carrying the sled. As you just saw, three of the four of the USA sleds had the fastest time so far in the race. And uh, I got to bring it up. I'm sure, Zach, you're seething a little bit, wondering how, how it would have turned out. But uh, you don't want to diss your teammate because, it was, all things considered, it was a, uh, a good weekend for Dana and Frank. Very good weekend. And they put down a clean run. They put down a clean race yesterday. So pumped for them. Madeline Egla will lead things off for Austria. She was a winner this weekend. She'll be followed by Stoy and Kindle. They were winners this weekend. They'll be followed by Jonas Mueller. He was a winner this weekend. 
expect Austria to build a huge lead on Italy here. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be real tough for Austria to not win this one. As long as they're consistent in their lines and not any major mistakes, they're all been flying this whole week, so we'll it's, see how it goes. It's all about putting the pressure on Germany to follow. And so far, Madeline's having a great run here. We'll see how far ahead she is. 900, she should blow Hoffer away, and she does. 1300, quick reaction time, aggressive paddles for Thomas Stoy and Wolfgang Kendall, who yesterday, in just their fifth race together, captured their first ever World Cup victory. And Zach, as you said, talk about the parity in men's doubles this year. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy to see Stoy with Wolfie now and just dominate. And it's been awesome. And, and five World Cup and races. Five, yeah, five World Cup races, five different winners. Five different winners from four different countries. Yeah, you know, it's, it's nuts. It's cool to see. I mean, having the same winner every single race like men's singles was for just about the past year. It's always tough to watch, but when anyone can win on any day, it's it's really cool. Hey, Reeder and Kainsfeldner had a great doubles for Italy because I don't think Stoy and Kindle picked up anything on them. They may have actually even lost a little. Yeah, I think they lost close to the tenth. So now we're going to see how Dominic's run is compared to Jonas. I think Dominic did have some more problems in the start than we saw just because of splits based on other people so far. And Jonas earlier today was as close to perfect as we've seen anyone this year. A term I've never heard that you said, Zach, is, was as if he was riding on rails. Yeah, it's been very impressive to watch Jonas. He's had such a fast start, such clean lines, and looks so relaxed on the sled. Everything you want in a good luge run, and he's doing it again here. The horns are sounding, the pad is hit, and time for a little wow. bit of atonement for the women's doubles team of Selena, Egla, and Lara Kipp. They were the World Cup leaders until a crash yesterday as they gave away the first run lead. And now they look to end this weekend on a high note. Yeah, four tenths there by Jonas is just crazy. So you'll see the women doubles too. They pick up speed at the bottom normally, especially compared to the Italians. I think if they can just put down a clean run, it should be a pretty sure thing. Keep it together, ladies. This is where the trouble was yesterday. But they made it look effortless on that one. This, Super good run. This is a great four sled team relay. The question, Zach, is will it be a winning four sled team relay? They definitely did everything they can to uh, put that pressure on. I think all four sleds had solid runs. Stoy was the only one who lost the, the Italians at all. So. It was really good to see four clean runs there by Austria. Austria guaranteed a podium position. Italy guaranteed a podium position. USA for the moment on the outside looking in. They've been there before. One team remains. Yeah, it'll be interesting with the Germans here. They can go so fast, but as you know, so many mistakes can be made through well, four sleds. Well, that's the thing. Will, will this, this group of four athletes who have won so many races will they say listen we just need to be clean to be on the podium or will they say we want to win this so we're going to take chances i think they got to go for it toby's it, have been known to take chances yeah they certainly want to gamble I don't, i'm not sure about julia she's fast even when she is conservative yeah you know, and that was a funny one when they're showing the replay of uh Stoy and wolf going to hit the pad. Wolfie sat up with him. I don't know if that was reactions from <laughs> singles or... All of years. <laughs> yeah, but sure. funny to see. But does that cost them time? I'm not sure it can cost too much time, but who knows? I mean, it could come down to a thousandth here, and if it does, and that was the reason, who knows? Austria has won five World Cup team relay events over the years. Germany has won a scant 47. But Austria looks to be in a position to do it. I believe that the Italians still have the best men's doubles time today. So a good finish for Reeder and Kainsfeldner. But now it all boils down to these two nations who have dominated the team relay, who have dominated the entire World Cup this season, Germany and Austria. The Austrians have the lead. The Germans set to go. Last week, Tobitz was the top placing German but due to injury, she sat out the relay. Now Julia's back. She's making that push towards the World Championships on her home track in Altenburg. 
Yeah, I'm not sure if it's because it's European champs that her and Madeline both are racing this relay or if their shoulders are feeling better and just feel more ready to, to race. I think in both cases they told me their shoulders are feeling better. I don't think perfect, and boy, it would be a bummer if they heard it again in this race, but Madeline seemed just fine. It looks like Madeline's a little bit ahead here. Only five hundredths, which isn't anything major, but not sure on how how solid Stoy's run is going to hold up against the Tobys here. Exactly. The Tobys up next. Uh, Stoy and Kendall, despite the win yesterday, were probably the weak link of the Austrian leading time. Tobys capable of all sorts of magic from race to race. And you see they had a great reaction time, put themselves back into the green after being three hundredths in the red. This is a team that has never lost an Olympic team relay competition. They're three for three in that discipline. And now already up a tenth. I think the biggest question is going to be Max if Max, Jonas. Yeah, Max can keep up with Jonas, because Jonas just built so much speed. Also, the women's doubles, because Selena and Lara, had they been perfect yesterday, would have bettered the Germans. So this is going to be close. Let's see what this margin is. Only a hundredth of a second. Max not perfect there in the start ramp either. No, not perfect at all. And he was saying for his men's race when I talked to him that his sled felt very skiddy and he didn't feel very secure that whole race. So maybe with this lower speed, it'll be better. But if he's skidding at all, he's not gonna be able to keep up with Jonas's run. Things are starting to trend slightly in Austria's direction. Max has been known to create some fast speed. His long winning streak ended earlier today, but he was still on the podium, and he's keeping it close at least, Zach. Yeah, it's gonna end up coming down to the women's doubles. I think he'll just be under a tenth here for this change time, and we'll start hearing the Austrian crowd get crazy. Jessica and Cheyenne, they waver a little on that start ramp, and that's not gonna help their pursuit of Selena and Lara and Team Austria. Sadly, I think that might be enough. With such slow speeds at the start, any problems like that can cost so much more than you'd ever expect. I don't think I've ever seen this team crash, so if they keep it together, they will be on the podium. They'll likely be in second place. Yeah, and they're putting down a pretty solid run here now. Getting down to the end. Tenth and a half behind. I don't think they can make this up on the Austrians. They but can't, but still three tenths up on the Italians. This will be a second place run for Germany. But for the sixth time in the history of Team Relay, Austria's in front, capping what has been a usual situation here in Innsbruck, a dominating weekend for the home team. Yeah, that was just awesome by Austria. Four clean runs, going super fast too. Jonas with pretty much a perfect weekend there. Same with Madeline and Stoy and Wolfie, so I think all of them have to be super happy after that. Things held pretty much to form for the first time in three weeks on the team relay, where we knew that Latvia and Italy would battle possibly for the bronze. In the end, the USA had a sensational day bettering Latvia. Italy gets its first podium of the season, and then the top two switch positions from the first two races. For sure, I think USA has to be proud of those four runs, Latvia has got to be a little disappointed just because they did have that speed, but one messy run can, can kind of ruin it, so. And it was such a young women's doubles team. And uh, so that's not that big a surprise. Yeah, for sure, it's hard. First World Cup, like you said, to, to come into relay as well. It's, it's a lot in one weekend to learn how to do it. Pretty good form there for Max. Yeah, he looks very relaxed. I think. Did you, did you hear his quote about his favorite curve? In no. He said it's, it's the turn to get back on the Autobahn to go to Germany. <laughs> he, he was saying how excited he was for Altenburg, so. Must be nice when you're disappointed with your worst performance of the season. It's third. Yeah, he's just had a crazy run now, so it was wild to see it end because I think a lot of people thought he was somehow going to pull out some magic for this race as well and end up beating Jonas, but wasn't enough. Hugs all around. It used to be just 12 athletes in, the, in that zone. Now it's 16 or something like that, right? Yeah, 18. It's, it's a crowded little podium there. <laughs> 
trying to find your space. Austria, Germany, congratulations to Italy making it onto the podium for the first time this season. USA continues to be very solid in team relay. World Championships, the next stop. Zach, what are your thoughts about Altenburg for yourself and for just in general what it takes on that track? Yeah, I think it'll be interesting looking at the weather for next week. The whole training week's gonna be cold, hard ice. Um, so it's gonna be a little quick, quick learning curve, especially for the men. I mean, men's start here compared to men's start in Altenburg whole different beast over there so and then there's the other side of that discussion where as often it is not the weather turns in Altenburg just like that and it, it may be cold next week for training and then it may be five degrees Celsius the following weekend for the race which tends to be a little nicer than what we normally get there where it's the five degrees Celsius and then race day it's cold. all of a sudden track record ice so we'll see how it goes I'm excited for it two weeks in the same place will be nice to get settled in and try to find the group back on the sled. What an incredible weekend for Team Austria. They didn't have that one, two, three, four men's singles finish that they had last year, but five races were held here on their home track, four victories for the Austrians. Yeah, and I think it very easily could have been five, two as well with, with the women's doubles field. Having think, the lead until the yeah, final curve, exactly. the final sled the final race in women's doubles. Very impressive by Austria this year. Do you think Kate is gonna interview everyone? I don't know, it's <laughs> quite, could, a, quite we, a lot. We could have a three hour FIL studio show coming up, but no, probably one or two good interviews and time to head on out to the next event. All right, World Cup standings coming up, as well as European championship standings. Germany holding onto that lead, but that's one position now, just one spot. Next World Cup race, if it finishes as it did today, there'll be a tie. USA safely in front. So if the United States can hold on and at least finish races, they're in a good chance to finish in the top three at the end of the season. Hopefully we don't have it like last year where the last Winterberg race of the season, I think it came down to one or two points Is where right? Austria, Austria came back. We were like doing the math before and we're like, if we're on the podium and Austria doesn't get, it doesn't win and Germany doesn't get fourth, we're totally fine. But and well, this happened at the 2018 work. Olympics too, where Austria just edged out the Americans yep. for Olympic hardware. For sure. Now the European Championships kick the USA off of that leaderboard and you will have your top eight with Austria taking it over Germany, Italy, Latvia, and Ukraine for the European Championships in Team Relay. All right, Zach, best of luck to you the rest of the way. I am certain we'll see you in some more Team Relays, uh, but a classy move after a tough day yesterday to join me and some great insight in today's competition. I appreciate it. No, thank you very much for having me. It's always a joy being in the booth, and yeah, glad I could watch a Team Relay for once. European Championship standings there. That's Zach Di Gregorio, Team USA. And that will wrap up an incredible weekend of racing. The winner, perhaps Innsbruck, with this beautiful weather, this exciting racing. They're making a bid to host the 2026 Olympics on this track. It'll be interesting to see where that call ends up later this month. Where we'll find out where this th month. <laughs> yeah, where we'll find out where the, where the next Olympics could be. Don't know what it'll mean competitively, but I know what it'll mean aesthetically. This is certainly a beautiful place, and our thanks to the folks here for hosting a great weekend of racing. That'll wrap things up for the World Cup. Of course, still ahead, Kate is standing by with the FIL studio show. But until next time, for my broadcast partner, Zach, and our entire FIL studio crew, I'm Tim. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time from the World Championships in Altenburg. All right, we just finished the team relay. Uh, this is for day two uh, here in Innsbruck in Eagles, Austria. Uh, that was some pretty good.
good racing. I mean, I know last week in Winterberg, it wasn't the week for Italy or for Latvia, but uh, they did pretty well. So congratulations to Italy for uh, coming in third. And then we had Austria in second. No, no, excuse me. Austria won, and then Germany came in second. So uh, like, you know how we do it with our medal ceremonies. We've got our German team doing their interviews, uh, and then we're going to bring everyone back on here, and we're going to do our medal ceremony uh, for Team Austria. But that was a – I mean, they swept every – every race except like they took gold for every race except for i'm thinking i'm like trying to think like who and uh they took gold for every race except for men's doubles no no you know what it's been a long weekend i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do this it was for women's doubles that's what it is women's doubles that was the only german gold uh that they took home austria took the golds from every single uh, other discipline so uh we're not surprised of course they're fast here on their home track so uh we are just gonna wait for everyone to get together so actually let's take a little bit of a break and when we come back we're gonna have everyone uh, on the stand i don't know how they're gonna fit eight people up there but uh we'll see how it goes so yeah let's take a little break we'll run a little commercial for you and then we'll be back